This is just one piece of a multi-part course. If you're interested in more, check out tunefiles.com. We now want to just look at this a little bit closer and make any tweaks or refinements needed to ensure that we can animate this effectively. The first thing we want to do is hide anything that we don't need to see. And in this case, it's going to be the bones. The bones are serving their purpose. They're connected now to the controllers and they are linked appropriately. And so I'm just going to come in here, click on heel two, scroll down to hips, and then click the visibility option to hide all those bones. So now it's just easier to come in here and start playing around with this to see what's going on. So again, if we bend this arm, we can take a look here. And the thing we wanna pay attention to is making sure that the bends and everything look good and nice and they appear to. And again, a lot of that comes from the fact that we can come in and place things down using that reference with those green points I had established before. And so that really does help. Now, if you're noticing things are maybe a little bit off, you can go in and try to make some adjustments. One thing you could try doing, let's say it's just slightly a little bit off, you could come into the actual layer and just using your arrow keys, try to nudge it you know, back and forth, up or down, just a little bit. Now, you don't wanna do that too much because again, you can throw off the default position. So if I come back here and I put this to zero, and again, we did this for a reason to zero out the bones. So that way we can just do that. You want to make sure that the default position is still looking good. You don't want to come in and, of course, raise and lower things and then break that default position. And so that's one thing to keep in mind when working with this. You could also come in too. And if the bend isn't quite right, you could maybe create a shape underneath the two connecting pieces so we have, for instance, the bicep and the forearm here. We could come in and let's just say there's some weird gap. We could make an ellipse. For the fill color, we could just select, for instance, the jacket here. And then we could have a stroke that's black set to, let's say, three. And we can just hide one of these really quick. We could come in here and draw this out and try to fill in that gap however you feel it would need to be filled in and then once you're all set with that and the bend is looking good you'd also want to make sure that you assign this shape layer to a bone by going to its parent and then of course assigning it so that in this case it would be assigned to let's say the forearm or the bicep but again in this case we don't need to do that it's just something i want to mention just things in the past that i have done to help doctor some of these rigs if they're not quite ready for prime time. And there's just some other things too. You can take a look here. So we talked about this in the previous video. This bend, at least for how it looks with the limbs connecting, looks fine. But let's say we don't want him to bend this way. Maybe he does bend this way because we want him to have his arm at his side like this but let's say we want it to be going up because he's going to be let's say scratching his head or pointing up well the good thing about this is we can easily change this on the fly so we can click on that controller go to effect controls and here we'll find ik for the hand and there is a reverse section so if you check that and come back here you can see now it's going to reverse the way this looks and the way it operates. So now it's bending this way. And you have that benefit now of being able to work that way. The other cool thing about this is you'll see there's a stopwatch there, which means you can change this at any time. So if you want his arm to be at his hip in one moment, it can be. And then if he needs to scratch his head or do whatever he needs to do, bending the other way, you can just make sure that stopwatch is on and then just enable the direction you want at any time and it'll go from there. So again, you have a lot of control here when it comes to these control points when you're working with your rigs. And just some other things to note as well. You'll notice when I'm, for instance, moving the arm, the hand is down. Well, you can come in here to that control point, and I think I mentioned this with the head in the previous video, but you can also rotate. So we could just rotate this to bring it up 
so that it makes sense with what the animation is currently doing and all that fun stuff. So there we go. There is that. Just bring this back to default. And let's go to the position and also just bring it back to default really quick. There we go. And just some final things to pay attention to. I just, again, suggest you go through and just play around with the rig. Make sure, again, the bends and everything look good. And making sure that they're bending in the direction you want. Again, that's easily changed. You can see here that this leg is overlapping the coat. I really don't want that. Something just must have got mixed around. So we could come in here and maybe take a look at this and adjust that. Perhaps we bring just these portions down below the coat. So now you can see that it's fixed. And that's looking better. We can also check the bends of the torso. Just kind of coming in here and doing this. And again, you can see that it's bending for the most part. But for cases like that, if we come in and hide the coat, you can see that it's breaking a little bit. The coat is going to cover it, but here you might need to go in and do some more diligent work with it. Or just outright use puppet pins because that would be good for this, as you'll be seeing here in the next section when we animate using puppet pin bones. But for the most part, this rig is working, and it's working well, and we could use this basic functionality to keep building it up from there. And that is what's really nice about this. And so, again, go through, just make sure if you want to use this layer-based process that everything is polished, connected, and just know that you do have control within the controllers with Duic. So we're going to pause here and up next, jump over to Puppet Pin Rigging, where we have more flexibility and can create more cartoony-like bends. To view the rest of this course or gain access to the source files, visit toonfiles.com.